Hello everyone, welcome to the finals of the Japan Dota Cup. This is going to be a best of three and it's going to be a faction versus White Flag Bear. So White Flag Bear we saw yesterday defeating the Nan Nankutsu Bringer, I think that was their name. And uh, still playing fairly well all around. Uh, they have decided to go again for the Invoker and Batrider ban. I do believe that was their last two bans in the last game as well. Uh, as I said, Invoker very annoying to play against. Uh, if you go for a Quaswex, it's pretty easy to just uh, screw up the team fight all around with the EMP Tornado. And the Batrider is just a uh, uh, well. Everyone knows about Batrider. I mean, when you just watch a map, uh, a match, uh, a competitive match, Batrider is probably always picked or banned, as he is one of those heroes who, by nature, by just the role of the hero is just uh, you know so powerful that it's not really about the numbers that much. It's just that the fact that you just blink in, catch one hero through BKB, and hightail out of there, and that just basically means you just kill someone. Uh, and also, if you don't keep manage to kill him immediately, you put him out of position. So Affection decided to go for a Doom as well as a Viper ban. And it is going to be Dazzle first pick for White Flag Bear, so okay. Dazzle first pick doesn't really show your hand. It is kind of like a hidden card right now, but uh, you are still giving away some very high value pick, like the Tinker, the Tide Hunter. Once again, the Tide Hunter. I'm not even going to talk about it anymore. Tide Hunter, always, <laughs> always that good pick for amateur team. And Tinker, we, we just saw last game how Tinker can be annoying. Uh, Tinker is one of those heroes who you n don't necessarily rely on team, which is uh, always good when you're not so, you know, you're not so confident in playing with your teammates. Maybe you just, you know, maybe the team just formed up a couple of weeks ago. You haven't practiced that much, uh, a lot of strategies or anything. And Tinker is one of those heroes who, even if your team is not super on par, you can still do some very, very strong single solo play. Um, I remember uh, it, it was a long time ago, but Ohio, who is currently the offlaner on Titan, uh, he started up as a MUFC mid laner, and he was kind of like the, the young prodigy. It's like everyone saying, like, Ohio, where does he come from? And he was playing exclusively Tinker. And he was playing solo. Basically, he was, he was never with his team. He would just go for a Dagon E Blade immediately after a Blink Dagger and a Soul Ring and a Boots of Travel. And he would just go around killing people and farming up the entire map. And he was really well known for that back in the days. Now he is an offlaner and he is known for his Dark Seer and his Nature's Prophet. But I really, really, uh, you know, like to remember when he first appeared in the scene two or three years ago. He was really impressive because Tinker wasn't that played anymore on the Western scene, and he kind of like brought back Tinker for me at least in the South Asian scene uh, with those uh, you know very aggressive Tinker plays. So what do we see here? We see a Shadow Shaman for White Flag Bear again. So a lot of pushing potential with Shadow Shaman, but. The problem is here, you have Dazzle, Shadow Shaman, who are two very squishy supports. So Tidehunter with a Ravage and Tinker with Rockets can very easily just kill those two heroes, or at least zone them out with the March of the Machine, because you don't have someone like a, like Shadow Shaman is not someone like, a, so let's say, an Ogre Magi, who can at least take some punishment from the March of the Machine. Shadow Shaman and Dazzle, if they walk into the March of the Machine, they're just gonna blow up. So we see a Skeleton King, as well as a Centaur Ban for Affection, and on the other side for White Flag Bear, we have a Lycan, as well as a Mirana Ban. So we'll have to see what it uh, what they go for. Uh, we have seen last game Lycan, Tinker, Tidehunter on the same team, and that basically spelled disaster as they just couldn't fight anywhere. They couldn't take a team fight because of the Tidehunter. They couldn't split push because of the Lycan and the Tinker. So they couldn't do anything, and they just got split push to death even after a very very good start. I'm talking of course about the third place decider, which was Tomato Juice versus Nanko Subringer, where Tomato Juice started with a very, very nice early game, uh, you know, mo um, movement. They got the first blood in the jungle, then they went into creep skipping with the axe and actually managed to kill the, the first tower very, very, very uh, early in the game. But then as the game progressed on, Tinker just got fat, Lycan just got fat, 
Uh, Tide Hunter just got fed as well, and this game was pretty much over from that point. So we have to see what affection is going to go for. Tinker can go on the uh, you know carry uh, lane role, the safe lane, or he could also go for the mid lane. Usually we see him in the mid lane. So Slark is going to be the pick here. A very very slippery hero that also f like to feast on the likes of Dazzle and Shadow Shaman because Shadow Shaman. What are you gonna do? You hex the Slark up, he's gonna use his uh, Dark Pact and just run away, or you can just he can just use the Shadow Dance and kill you in a couple of hits, because Shadow Shaman is just so squishy that you won't be able to survive the, uh, you know, the pounce into the right clicks. Jakiro is going to be the pick here for White Flag Bear, so is that gonna be a Shadow Shaman middle lane? That is something that we haven't seen in a long time, but it has been done in the past, and it has been done to great efficiency as well. It's just that Shadow Shaman is not a bad mid laner. It's just that it's overshadowed by a lot of different heroes because he can shine as a support just as well. Also, something that I haven't mentioned, but Dazzle can make a very good mid laner. We never see that, but Dazzle is actually very strong as a mid laner. His spell, like the Poison Touch, really hurt a lot, and he has a, a very nice attack animation and great base damage. So Dazzle in the mid lane, it's kind of like the old Dota 1 time where we would see always Warlock in the mid lane going for stats and Shadow Ward because the simple fact that these heroes have so so strong of an attack animation and the kit they have allows them to harass a lot if they're not you know, played as solely a support, a Dazzle that for example goes for a like, bottle or something can just control the mid lane so powerfully that it could be, a, you know, it could be a choice. So we see a Death Prophet now. So now, now the cast out the bag for White Flag Bear. It's just all out pushing. Shadow Shaman Ward, Death Prophet Ultimate, Jakiro's Liquid Fire, and Dazzle just on top of this to give the, uh, the give the team the entire team armor. That makes it very hard for the enemies to fight against that team because Dazzle doesn't need to have the enemy position well for him to do a good ultimate. He can just use his weave on his entire team. And by the time the enemy decides to fight, it's going to be plus 7, plus 10 armor on everyone, and that's going to reduce the Slark damage by a lot, although Slark is one of those carry heroes who can deal a lot of magical damage as well. So, we'll have to see how it goes. Tinker has good March the Machine clear, uh, 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 clear, uh, sorry, creep clear, but the problem is Tinker needs some levels before being able to do that. So, the question is, is White Flag Bear going to be able to take the adventures early enough to be able to, to uh, you know, defend those towers. Oh, no, I mean, Affection, are they going to be held, holding long enough to be able to hold those towers thanks to Tinker? Otherwise, there is no creep clear whatsoever on the on the Radiant side. Tinker has the Mortal Machine, but Tide Hunter has nothing, Slark has nothing, Shadow Demon has a Shadow Poison, but it, again, it takes time to stack up the damage, and Omni Knight has nothing to, creep, uh, to uh, clear the creep wave. So, the Brewmaster here is it kind of like the secondary version of uh, of Tide Hunter. I was talking to Karak once, uh, who was playing for Team Liquid, I think, and he told me that if you don't get a Tide Hunter, I was talking about how Tide Hunter in the amateur teams was pretty much a stable pick because it was the anti fuck up button. And I was saying, what if what happened if they decide to ban Tide Hunter? What should I pick if I want to have something similar? And he said. Someone similar is Brewmaster, because you just clap and use ultimate, and you have control of the entire team fight, just like the Titan Hunter just goes in and press R. So, those two heroes are very similar in the sense that they are their role in team fights are going to be this high disruption uh, by just going in and using the ultimate. We s it seems to it seems like we have a like a, a almost like a support tri lane here with only supports going up on the top lane. And I'm not really sure this is a good idea because Shadow Shaman really needs a lot of levels to... Well, he, he needs to get to his level 6 very, very fast. So I would have even seen a 2-1-2 a two, two, two style of lineup for the White Flag Bear side with Brewmaster getting the solo experience and just Shadow Shaman uh, getting the entire experience from the creep camps here by pulling, pulling, pulling again and having Jakiro and... The Dazzle just laying some damage on the tower because it's going to be very hard to kill the Dazzle with the Jakiro. Jakiro is very tanky uh, by default, and Dazzle can just 
help him uh, just stay alive with Shadow Wave, Child Grave, and even maybe get a kill with the Poison Touch. But here, I dislike this Tri-Lane because they have a lot of disables, but they don't have a lot of damage. They have a lot of harassment. Uh, Jakiro can harass a lot with Liquid Fire, Dual Breath, uh, Dazzle can harass a lot with the Poison Touch, but, and Shadow Shaman has a, you know, has good Shackling killing ability, but they have no damage to follow that up. So it's gonna be Tri-Lane versus Tri-Lane, and we have Affection on top lane with a Slark, Omni Knight and Shadow Demon, which is going to make it very hard for them to kill the Slark. Because if if the uh, oh whoa, whoa Shadow Shaman has to be careful because uh, Shadow Demon is around. Because if the Slark gets targeted, he can pounce away. He can the Dark Pact to purge the, the uh, debuff, and Shadow Demon can also use Disruption to save him. The Omni Knight can also use the heal and also the repel in case that the uh, Slark gets jumped on. So overall, I'm not really sure I agree with that choice. Death Prophet in the middle lane with some very very uh, Nice uh, cosmetics, very very. Uh, I mean, I have never seen that. Uh, is it like the immortal? Yeah, it's probably the the immortal cosmetics from the uh, from the companion. So bottom line is going to be Brewmaster versus Tide Hunter, and I would say that I give the advantage Tide Hunter. The reason is because his anchor smash costs very little mana and reduce the attack damage by sixty percent. So if you take a look at Brewmaster right now, he's hitting for 20 damage approximately. And it's going to be make it, making it very, very hard for Brewmaster to get any kind of last hits as long as he eats uh, these, um, these uh, Anchor Smash in the face, which he is. Yeah, see that even his crit is going to be 52 damage. So middle lane, normally Death Prophet is a very strong middle laner. Uh, she just has to be careful to get those last hits and eyes because uh, missing them is not going to spell uh, very, very... Um, you know, a very good laning phase for her. She should be able to push, uh, out push the Tinker in the early levels, get the rune control because of that, and start harassing the tower at level 6. Uh, she's missing every last hit as, as I'm watching her. So Jakiro, Liquid Fire's up. He can start to lay down a lot of damage on that tower. Have to be careful though. Shadow Shaman's gonna take a little bit of damage from the tower. Actually, quite a little bit. <laughs> it's actually not a little bit anymore, it's quite a lot. So Brewmaster, 7 creep kills, Tidehunter, 7 creep kills, the Jakiro, 8 creep kills, the Slark, only 3 creep kills, so he's very scared, and he's scared, he, he has good reason to be scared too, because at that level, oh, they might be trying to go on someone, they're gonna go on that, uh, on that Dazzle, but it's not the right choice, I think, they're just gonna turn it around, Omni Knight is gonna take a lot of damage, and Dazzle just... Eats a Tango and he's fine. Shadow Shaman's now level 2. Dazzle's level 2 as well. He decided to level Shadow Wave. That's interesting. I really thought he would uh, panic pick, uh, pick the Shadow Grave, but apparently he didn't. So nicely done by, uh, by him to know that he wasn't going to be killed. The damage output of this tri -Lane is also very low at this moment. He, they have a lot of um, ways to save this arc if he Sark gets jumped on, but otherwise Okay, they want to go again, and they're going to catch a Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman, he's going to get graved, so no problem there. Oh, has to be careful. Oh, is there a heal? There's, there is a one, and there's a Shadow Wave. Shadow Wave is going to be getting that kill on the Omni Knight, who tried to get the last in on Shadow Shaman, but that went, that magic stick just saving him. And now they're just back to full health, so it's going to be hard to get another kill, or at least try to get another kill. Mana is going to be up. Shallow Grave is not up though. Brewmaster gets a kill in the bottom lane on 1v1 situation. I'm not really sure what happened there. It is very, very strange as normally Tidehunter is probably never going to fall down in 1v1 one -on -one against a Brewmaster, especially since Brewmaster doesn't have the ultimate yet. So again, Dust Prophet's getting control of the rune, and that is normal. That is to be expected due to the fact that she can push very easily with her Crypt Swarm. And Shadow Shaman harassing a lot with his uh, little Aether Shock, dealing a good amount of damage. Jakiro maxing up that Liquid Fire, and the tower almost falls. Oh, Slark is just so low, they have to be careful. So they nicely done. Jakiro waits until the, the tower gets... Uh, oh! Oh! They're deciding to go on the Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon. He's gonna get slowed down by the... No, actually that doesn't slow, it just damages. It's an attack speed slow, not the movement speed slow. 
So the liquid fire dealing some good damage to Shadow Demon and the tower falls down to who actually destroyed it. It was just the Radiant, so no one getting the extra gold there. Death Prophet has a Invis in her bottle, so she may decide to go for a push on the bottom lane, for instance, if they, if they can kill the Tidehunter. Tidehunter has Arcane Boost, Brewmaster has Arcane Boost. Tidehunter, not really sure what he's doing. Brewmaster could just ult ulti right now and probably kill the Tidehunter, but he decides not to. Top lane, the pressure still goes on. Affection are unable to defend those towers. As I said, they have no way whatsoever to cre clear the creep wave. Their only chance is just to try to go in and get a kill on someone who's out of position, like the Shadow Shaman. Otherwise, they're just gonna get just you know harassed to death. And they decide to go on the Shadow Demon once uh, the, on the uh, Shadow. Whoa! Tidehunter goes in, use the Ravage. And the, the Dazzle goes down immediately. Shadow Shaman decides to, decides to try to be a hero and use the, uh, e the shackles on the enemy Tidehunter. And actually, the, 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 the Jakiro lives. The Jakiro just lives. March of the Machine is going to go up. Tinker taking some damage. We see a TP coming up in the middle lane. But we have no mana to use the Exorcism, and Tinker is able to counter push with his Soul Ring anyway. Soul Ring, he has level 1 in the, March of the, uh, in the uh, Rearm as well, so as long as he is on the lane, he will not be pushed away by this Death Prophet. He shouldn't be able to get pushed away by this Death Prophet. So well, it seems like the support's going back up. Shadow Shaman, soon to be level 4, deciding to level the Hex, that's normal. Dazzle didn't level a single point into the Poison Touch, alright. Jakiro almost up to his mech. So when you have a team like that that want to push early, you want the fastest mech possible. You want Arcane, you want mech to, to be able to just spam your spells. Blink Dagger on the Panda is going to be one of the key spells and you also want, if possible, like a pipe or something if they have a lot of magic damage, which they have. They have a tinker with the March of the Machine. Uh, Omni Knight, I'm not really sure what you're doing here. They are not going to shackle him? Shadow Shaman? Alright, so he decides not to go onto the Omni Knight for some reason. Mercy, I guess. Dash Prophet is just waiting for her bottle to come back. She has 1k gold. Wonder what she's going to go for. One of the options would be Yule Scepter, as you can just Yule yourself and still deal damage over time uh, with your ultimate while being invulnerable. But, other choice would be just more tanky items. Brewmaster, hanging around, looking to get something done in the middle lane. Top tower does fall, and they may be looking for this mid tower push. Brewmaster is one of the few heroes who can just go straight on and Tinker, that is actually the worst place where you could be there. And you're gonna get stunned, stunned again, and that's a dead Tinker. Now, it is going to be time for Brewmaster to keep on dealing some damage before the ultimate run out. Although, it might be a great idea to just move away now. There we go, the tower is gonna fall to the Exorcism, and the Liquid Fire, who is... Liquid Fire is even slowing down the attack speed of the tower, making it less, um, you know, less efficient at uh, killing creeps. Brewmaster getting the last hits. He has a blink dagger. And the ultimate is going to be still up for quite some time. So they are going to be able to deal some good damage to the tower. Liquid Fire just really dishing out a lot of damage here. It is going to be 25 damage for 5 seconds. So a total of 125 damage every time he lands those Liquid Fire. Tower takes more than half HP of damage already. And the rockets are just not doing anything at that point. Shadow Shaman is still not level 6, so everything is happening, all this push is happening before the Mass Serpent Wars are even here. Jakira just gonna land one hit and run away. Fu is feeling a little bit more brave and go back, land 162 auto attack damage onto a creep, onto a, I mean a tower, and just walk away. The Arcane Boots really helping a lot in uh, sustaining this push. Two Arcane Boots at the moment. The mech is going to be able to fly out to them in a few moments. I'm not really sure why he isn't 
buying them, buying it. I mean, uh, isn't flying it in right now. But the tower is probably gonna fall now. Nope, it is going to be a glyph used. The panda still doesn't have his ultimate ready. The broom, uh, the titan sure has though, but he doesn't have a blink dagger. So, in the meantime, no one is farming on side lane. Slark was still standing here in the mid lane where he should have been farming on the bottom or top lane because he's wasting time at the moment. He can't do anything in this team fight. Sheep going on onto Tinker. They have to be careful. Ooh, the morse of the machine really hurting a lot. And Shadow Shaman still like running around like a headless chicken. It is going to be Oh, actually they don't even deny it. So the 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 catapult gets the tower. And Deathrop is gonna get a regen rune, and they're gonna head straight up to the bottom lane. This time with the mech. <laughs> Medazzle got a magic stick. And Deathrohead got a drum, so that's also very good. Drum empowers your allies and your creeps. Even though everyone almost is, uh, actually almost everyone is a ranged hero right now here for the Radiant side for White Flag Bear, but they could even go for a um, Vladimir offering just to push even more by giving them armor and everything. It seems a little bit weird, but a, a Vlad here would be really great for pushing. Or even just a... I'm surprised they don't got a, a Bassy Ring. Oh, actually they have. They have a Bassy Ring on Jakira. So it's fine. I'm just not paying attention. Top tower, lots of damage gonna be done by Slark, but they still can take this tier 2 tower, where Slark probably won't be able to do much more than deal a little bit of damage here. Brewmaster is not there though, so they have to be pretty careful in dealing damage to this tower. We have Omni Knight, who's level 4 only, he can't do anything. Tidehunter is level 6, or uh, even level 8, but he can't do much without getting damaged. If he walks in, he might die immediately. So they decide to back off. The ultimate is finished for that best profit. And she's gonna get another rune. Brewmaster's top lane. Farming up a little bit. Missing up a lot of the creeps as well. Tinker is still on the top of the chart for the creep kills, but does he have they have lost already 5 towers and they have taken none. If we take a look at the experience, it's actually going the way of the Dire because the Radiant side is always grouped up. But if we take a look at the uh, gold graph, it's 10,000 gold in advantage for the Radiant due to all these towers falling down. So we have the Dire side start stacking the Ancient for Tinker later on, or even Tidehunter. Tidehunter is just getting harassed and bullied by the Jakiro's Liquid Fire, who's doing a lot of damage. Tinker's coming in. Gonna be lasering a creep for good measure and just start laying down the March of the Machine. And once again, Liquid Fire going to be taking Tidehunter down a couple of uh, HP. Tinker has to be careful. Our Shadow Shaman has to be careful. He's gonna take a lot of damage by just standing there. Jakiro! Jakiro! Don't do that! Actually, yeah, do that. And he survives. Storm. S storm aspect. Omni Knight is gonna get shackled and killed, probably. There's a stun, there's a silence, there's a mass serpent ward. There's the Titan Tree coming in and just stuck inside the ward. The Slark is coming in, he's trying to get a kill, he's not gonna be able to get one. The only the Shadow Shaman died. And now Slark trying to run away. He will be able to. It's still a Slark. But the tower goes down. Three heroes go down for the dire side. And only the Shadow Shaman dies. This looks very bad for Affliction. White Flag Bear. They had a good strategy in mind. And they are going to execute it to a T. Jakiro just... I was really surprised when he just went straight in like that, running into the March of the Machine. I was like, no, nah, yeah, he's gonna suicide. Uh, Tinker's just gonna use a laser to breed him, but very nice uh, time mech, hands, uh, mech to to prevent him from getting into the kill range. And we also had Brewmaster who was around, clapping the Tinker's face off, and then splitting to deal some more damage. He's also well on his way to his Aghanim Scepter. 
What do we have for the Shadow Shaman? Shadow Shaman is also going for the Aghanim Scepter, and he is actually only 1,200 gold away from it. So he will have a very quick act for a support Shadow Shaman. It seems like Jakira decides to go for a, um, a Necro book and not a um, Aghanim Scepter of himself. Necro, uh, actually, Aghanim Scepter on Jakira is also very powerful. It doesn't help in pushing, but it does help in zoning out your enemies because the range is insane and the duration is also insane. I think it's 14 seconds. So if you put like the if you put the uh, ultimates straight like that, and then for 14 seconds your enemies can't fight there, you can very easily take the tower. So it's not a direct pushing tool, but it's very good for pushing as well because of the zoning potential. So I'm a little bit sad that we won't see mass. Uh, Mass Ags coming for the Radiant side, only on the Shadow Shaman and the Brewmaster. Uh, yeah, the Jakira decides not to go for it. Uh, Death Prophet doesn't have an uh, upgrade on her ultimate yet, and Dazzle. Dazzle doesn't really make sense to go for a um, Aghanim Scepter on Dazzle. I mean, it's it's not... Well, I mean, yeah. I was going to say it's not bad, but it's actually bad. It's actually not good at all, so... Smoke used, they want to catch someone. Shadow Shaman's leading the way to use a hex into the uh, shackle. They're not going to be able to catch anyone in the jungle, but there is still a Slark around, and Slark might be their target here. Slark is still visible, so they know that he's here. The smoke is going to run out though. Are they going to be able to catch him before he is able to use the Shadow Dance and leap into the trees? Oh, here comes a very good silence. But the silence is not going to be long enough. Shadow... Oh, he's going to use his ultimate. He's going to try to run away. He will not be able to... Oh, actually, he will be able to run away. No, the Yule Scepter used. And now it's going to be the silence, the slow, the, <laughs> the everything, the ice path, as well as the shackle, making sure that he doesn't escape. On the bottom lane, Tinker is desperately trying to push his way in. The Brewmaster has his ultimate. We may see the Radiant side trying to force a high ground, and they very well could. Everyone has their ultimate ready. It seems like uh, they're not going to shy away from that. Illusions popped, ultimates popped, a, sh a Sentry Ward even there to make sure that no one is sneaking up behind them. The Dazzle Shadow Weave is used. Oh, no, the, um, not the Shadow Weave. The ultimate, which is the Weave, is used. And the tower may very well fall. Brewmaster goes in, blinks in, try to get, the, try to get what seems to be yeah the Omni Knight. Omni Knight is going to be able to heal himself. Shadow uh, Shadow Demon falls. Omni Knight falls. They are not using their ultimate. Even the even the Titan Trap falls without using his ulti. And Slark is trying to run away. They don't even try to chase him. They are looking at these racks and they are going to be taking it very well played by White Flag Bear just destroying the enemy opposition by getting this very fast pushing lineup we've once again used whoa <laughs> Death Prophet still has to be careful she's not that tanky and it is going to be one set of racks going down 18 minutes in for White Flag Bear Shadow Shaman picks up her his Aghanim Scepter and we have a level 1 Necro on Jakiro. Don't get me wrong, the, uh, the Necro, Necro is also very good. It's just that I I would have liked to see that the Jakiro within Aghanim Scepter, I feel like it's a little bit more fun to see than just a an endless uh, stream of Necro units. So Tinker TPing in here, trying to do his best to push around the lanes and try to avoid having another lane pushed in like that. But Tinker this time, last time, I mean, he wasn't there in time. The moment the Radiant are actually pushing the tower down is the moment where he already should have put one or two more to the machine wave and he wasn't there. So we see them grouping up for the bottom tower Mech is on cooldown, but uh, all the ultimates are ready to go. Death Prophet is a little bit far, but she has 462 movement speed, so she's going to be able to get there pretty quickly anyway. And with the amount of healing they have, 
I do not think that Tinker will be able to push them away with simply the uh, seed seeking missile. There's two heroes that are very good against Tinker's constant harass, and one of them also is Juggernaut due to the healing ward. As long as the healing ward leaves, you can very, very, very easily uh, destroy the enemy, uh, you know, the, stay in the march of the machine, and still takes the take the damage. Um, the Brewmaster is sitting on an enemy ward, so they know that the Brewmaster is uh, around the corner here. So now he's gonna head into the jungle, trying to hide. The tower already taking a little bit of damage. Wave a uh, weave is off on the heroes. We'll have to wait a little bit more to have it uh, new. Tinker is going to lay down some more to the machine again. And they are gonna go in. So here comes the wards. Death Prophet not using her ultimate quite yet. The creeps taking the aggro from the serpent uh, the, from the tower, and that leaves a lot of time for the serpent ward to actually. Oh, Tide Hunter is gonna get silenced. He has the Kraken Shell procking up, and that is why Kraken Shell is good. But he doesn't manage to kill anyone. Shadow Shaman is still alive. Everyone's still alive, and the ultimate from the Death Prophet still dealing a lot of damage. Shadow Shaman's come back. He actually go and suicide to this Lark, but Slark, he is a little bit over his head right now, and he's gonna fall as well. The tower fell to the Serpent Wars, who, who are still standing and still dealing damage. Tinker's coming back in, he's lays the march of the machine, but the Omni Knight's gonna fall, the Shadow Demon's gonna fall, and the second set of racks is probably not gonna stay alive for long. The Brewmaster uh, marching, staying in the march of the machine and taking a lot of damage because of that, but um, it doesn't matter. Tinker cannot defend alone. He just can't. Brewmaster actually tries to get the Tinker. A little bit of a, a delayed reaction there by both. Like Brewmaster just saw Tinker, like it hesitated for a quarter second and then just decided, ah, you know what, I should just blink in. So level 3 Necro picked up by the, by the uh, Jakiro. Brewmaster has 1.5k gold. And we have the Dazzle with uh, 1.5k gold as well. What do we have on the Shadow Shaman? 2k gold. And on that Death Prophet, she is going to go for a heart. So she's going to be trying to get that unkillable status and just stay around with her ultimate, dealing damage all around. Oh, Tinker's going to TP in. Death Prophet just takes the rocket in the face and I uh, don't really... That doesn't really bother her that much. It seems like Tinker decides to go for a Dagon as well, so he wants to be able to pick off those squishy heroes. Shadow Demon has nothing. Poor him. Tide Hunter actually managed to get a mech, and this is very important. The Omni Knight doesn't have anything. Slark doesn't have his BKB yet. It's looking very, very bleak for uh, affl Affliction right now. Or uh, wait, Affliction or Affection? Can't remember. So Dagon level 3 picked up on Tinker. Oh, actually level 2, never mind, level 2. Is that, a, is that a wise choice for Tinker? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. What could he go for to help his team? Actually, in that situation, I don't really know. <laughs> Maybe a 4 staff to have even more mobility and to help his allies who are getting out of position. So all the ultimates are up, and might be time for a final push here. Are the Dire ready to defend? Is White Flag Bear gonna take this game with this last push, or are they gonna need a little bit more than that? Seems like a little... Oh, blink in by Tinker, but he is now a little bit in trouble. Actually, no, he managed to get out. He has no mana, though, so now is the time to go in if they want to because there's no more Tinker here. Uh, it is going to be the Brewmaster starting up with a clap, ulti. He doesn't manage to get anything done though. The problem is, at the same time, he's also getting the attention of the tower and everything is just 
pushing down the tower. The Brewmaster is going to fall, but so is the tower. The Silence coming in. Tidehunter is taking a lot of damage. He still has his ultimate up. And Tidehunter, he's gonna die before using his ultimate. So is the Omni Knight who just walks into the Shadow Shaman Ward and gets absolutely destroyed by that. Tinker is still spamming that rocket and Dazzle goes into a steal the gem operation. This is going to be Mega Creeps and this is going to be GG in a few seconds. Oh, two of them actually blink at the same time. We see that the Drunken Haze is going to land on that Slark. Laser, Rocket, Blink, and uh, the Dagon going to be able to get the kill on the Shadow Shaman. But at that point, it is pretty much fighting for honor and nothing else. The victory is going to be out of their hand. They won't be able to get anything. The Mega Creeps are coming and they are dealing a hell ton of damage. 100 damage per creep and 130 damage per range creep. So when these guys arrive and start laying the damage on the creeps, on the on the towers, you can make sure that the uh, heroes like Omnina is not going to last very long. 1,000 HP on that melee on the range creep and 1,200 HP on that on the melee creep. And they just stroll into the mortar of the machine like there's no, that is nobody's business. They're just like tower getting hammered down by those creeps. And the Radiant now, they just need to do one final push or even just wait for the dire side to lose their towers to creeps. It seems like they are going to group up. Not going to last too long though. And that's good. We don't want the games to drag on needlessly. They are grouping up for that one final push. For Affliction, they should be already thinking about what they should do in the next game. Omni Knight is just gonna die to the creeps, or almost die to the creeps. And there we go. The Radiant gonna go in. They're still waiting for that fat and slow Brewmaster. Who actually spent his money for a buyback, I guess. Yep. Yeah. A sheep is gonna go on Tidehunter, doesn't really matter. The towers are just getting hammered down by all these spells. Blinking by Tinker, trying to get a kill. He is the one gonna, who's gonna get killed. Here comes a Ravage, not doing that much. Tidehunter is gonna fall down. The mech is not gonna save him for long. And the Tinker also died there. So good game, well played. Game number two is gonna be on the way. And is that gonna be a 2-0 victory or is that going to be a three game series? We're gonna have to see that in the next game. So. Don't go anywhere guys, next game is coming soon.